Welcome to the third episode of my series looking into how to tweak the Mad Max Chia Plotter. Last week I spoke about overclocking the RAM and CPU, and this week I decided to take a completely different route. I was inspired to make this video by IDJ Mike's video where he used a server and 10k SAS drives. I was curious to see what a workstation could do with 15k drives, so I decided to try out some very cheap drives with my Threadripper build. And I'm not kidding when I was saying cheap. The first bunch of six only cost me $80, which means I paid roughly $13 per drive. You can find individual drives for about $20, $25 at the time of filming this. The drives that I'm using are 300 gigabytes Seagate ST300 MP0005 drives. Come with 128 megs of cache, and although they are two and a half inches wide, they are thick and heavy. I also bought a cheap cage and pass-through backplane that I modified a power cable for and connected the backplane with two SAS cables to a SAS2 HBA. I only paid $26 for the cage, around $10 for two 10-pin power cables, which I modified to work with a 6-pin PCIe power connector, which is attached to platinum-rated server PSU. All in all, the whole solution, not counting the HBA or server PSU, cost me less than $200, which is less than half the cost of a high-quality 2TB NVMe. Before I start talking about the results, I need to point out that there are only 168 hours in one week, and given how long especially the smaller raids took, uh, most of the series were only of 8 plots, and with plot times sometimes jumping 100 seconds one way or the other, the average over 100 plots would be a more accurate representation of the actual time that it would take for each setup. But again, 168 hours. I'm only human. So, to the results. I started out testing a single XFS versus a single EXT4. The XFS is clearly the winner here. I went on to try out different XFS raids, but I was unable to get farther than phase two with six drives before freezing. And with eight drives, I just froze in phase one. I tried quite a few things, including removing the CRC equals zero when formatting the raid, but none of that actually worked for me. Uh, I learned yesterday that updating to the latest version of Ubuntu may help with the XFS raids, but I didn't have enough time to test that out since I was plotting for this video until a few hours ago. I will be attempting to get XFS raids working, not in the next video, but the one after that. Still, that's a really impressive 1200 second time with just four hard drives. So what works when XFS doesn't? Well, EXT4, of course. These are the plot times from when either doing the first run of a series or using the W option, which forces the plotter to finish copying the file before starting the next one. The 1006 seconds achieved by a rate of eight is 16 minutes and 46 seconds, so under 17 minutes, which I have to say is quite impressive and almost on par with a single XFS and NVMe on this particular system. And here we have the comparison of full series of plots. Uh, that means I started each following plot immediately without waiting for the copy to finish. And we can see here that adding drives really makes everything considerably faster, at least until six drives, after which phase one and phase four in particular don't seem to get much better. 81.65 plots per day is what eight of these drives formatted EXT4 will give you, and that's not bad at all. Now, I need to point out that these numbers are all with RAM as my temporary 2 storage. I will be showing the hard drive only plots in just a little bit. So the next chart is showing the time difference between a first run and the average of the series. Even with two drives, unless your copy time is faster than 300 seconds, which mine is not, you're better off running this in series without the W flag. I was told that some people were using NVMEs as buffer drives, and it makes perfect sense to me, logically. But when looking at the numbers, my computer didn't see the logic when using six drives, where it was slower than without the buffer drive. 
Although I did get up to 83.91 plots per day with 8 drives. This may be a case of having too few plots in a series to get an accurate average, however. And of course I tested U, V, and K values, and nothing seems to beat U8, V7, K1 on my system at least. Circling back to the tests with NVMEs as buffer drives, these other results show that with 8 drives, we got worse results when using an NVMe buffer drive. Wait, 2,052 seconds? That's 34 minutes and 12 seconds. Oh, that's right. I snuck that in on you, didn't I? The results that all of the RAM-challenged individuals have been waiting for, the T1, T2 hard drive plotting results. So over here, we can see that 8 in RAID are twice as good as 4 in RAID. Now, if only some idiot could buy 8 more of these hard drives to see if 16 drives could give us 1,000 second times. Oh, wait, I did. But they haven't arrived yet, so y'all are going to have to wait a couple of weeks to find out how that goes. I did test U7 since it wasn't bound by RAM, but it was a bit of a bummer with half a plot per day less. When looking at the plots per day from only using hard drives, it doesn't look great at 42 plots with 8 drives, but my CPU was only running at around 20-25%, so it might be possible to do multiple ones in parallel which is something that I plan on testing once I get the rest of my hard drives. So what's the verdict? Even without XFS, with a RAM disk or T2, we are getting dangerously close to NVMe speeds, and this is definitely something that I intend on following up on, as these are cheaper and should last a lot longer than NVMe's under these brutal conditions. When using the hard drives as T2 storage, however, we suffer almost 100% penalty on plotting times, but it does free up the CPU to run multiple parallel plots if you get more hard drives. So the question would be how much extra each plot would affect the others. Another thing to consider is that I'm running 24 threads at 4,350 and 24 threads at 4,250 megahertz. If you're running a lesser system, your CPU might be bottlenecking your system. In which case, one or two stacks of eight 15K SAS drives may end up allowing you to utilize your system to its fullest extent. The only way to find out is to try it out. Now, I hope that my adventures into SAS drive land has at the very least entertained you and possibly even helped you in one way or another. Now, I finally received my monoblock, so next week's episode will either be about using RAM for both T1 and T2, or it might end up being a video of me crying over the corpse of my plotter. Tune in next week to find out which it will be. Bye!